A steam plant using a castle steam boiler, part two. Having a look at the boiler and the condenser position. This boiler is currently one of a kind. It is the prototype of a boiler that Castle Steam called a bug. So how do I know this information? Well, I phoned Steve at Castle Steam, and Steve explained that this was the prototype for a series of boilers called the bug. This prototype was sold to my customer for whom I'm building the steam plant. And the first thing I'm going to do is try the boiler out and just see how it works. I filled it with water using a funnel as you've just seen. I fitted a half inch by 26 threads per inch blanking plug to replace the turret. A while back before he retired, Mike Abbott of Max Steam made a boiler very similar to this. It didn't have the refinements that this boiler's got, like a really nice little window keyhole thing where you light it at the front. The main similarity between this boiler and Mike's is the fact that this has two flue tubes, and both of these flue tubes have cross water tubes fitted as you can see here. The coil of copper tubing inside the front of the boiler is not the superheater, it's a water economizer. And the job of this piece of copper piping is to preheat the water before it goes into the boiler. The pipe goes into the boiler at the bottom and it's connected to the check valve at the side. I do like the small keyhole facility. This is where you light the gas. When I tried this using Mike Abbott's twin flue boiler, the gas explosion was much louder than this, it actually made me jump. Gas fired water tube boilers generally howl, and this was no exception. But by carefully adjusting the position of the jets, I managed to eliminate the howl, that's a first. These twin burners are not ceramic burners, I know they look like ceramic burners, but they're not. I'll show them up close later on. As the burners are identical, the jet positions also are identical. And once I've very carefully got the jet positions in the right place, the howling stopped. I'm always very concerned when I'm working with gas-fired boilers like this. Generally speaking, the combustion is incomplete and they generate carbon monoxide. As the boiler started to warm up before there was any pressure, as you can see, I got the usual slight dribble from the check valve. Don't forget that the stainless steel ball inside the check valve is held against the seat by the pressure of the steam. The blowdown valve is also dribbling very slightly, but this just needed tightening up. I thought it would be a good idea to remove the burners temporarily from the boiler and look at the flame in free air. The heat from them is incredible. I think they have quite big jets fitted, and this is usually a problem when using them indoors. So I have my carbon monoxide alarm at the ready. I refitted the twin burners into the flues and continued the test. And as you can see, there is now some pressure showing on the pressure gauge. Why have I put the pressure gauge on its side? Well, the reason for this is quite simple. Can you see the white thing in between the nut that goes into the boiler? Well, that I think is a PTFE washer. And it would appear that as the temperature of the boiler got hotter, the thickness of this washer got smaller, so a leak appeared. I do also have another criticism of the pressure gauge. Because I is well old in it, I can't see it, it's too small. I'm using my workshop magnifying glass so I can see what the pressure is. If the magnifying glass was not as dirty as this, I would be able to see a lot better. And if I wasn't the age that I am, I'd also be able to see the gauge anyway, without the magnifying glass. As I expected, this boiler is a real performer. In no time at all, almost record time, both of the safety valves were blowing off. The major problem with gas burners in model boilers, though, is gas chilling in the gas tank caused by the evaporation of the gas inside the tank. This boiler has two burners, so the evaporation and chilling is twice as bad. This clip shows me warming up the tank using the heat from my hands. The gas pressure increased and the boiler blew off even more. And then... My carbon monoxide alarm went off. Here it goes again. And bear in mind, both of the workshop doors are wide open to the atmosphere. That was the end of the steam test. I turned the gas off immediately and removed the connector from the canister. 
I took the carbon monoxide detector with me out into the garden and sat with it until it stopped beeping. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this boiler is a prototype. Everything on this video and more I reported to Steve at Castle Steam while I was waiting for the carbon monoxide to clear from the workshop. I'm going to modify certain aspects of this boiler to make it work with the application for which I need it. The boiler is designed for performance, to raise and supply a lot of steam. It would be great in a model boat. Believe it or not, when I looked at the jets that feed these two burners, the jets are number 16s, which are massive jets. Really, for this application, I think I need to reduce the jets down to something like a number 8 in each one of them. Although, if I was putting this boiler in a boat, I'd leave them just the way they are because they give plenty of heat. After a while, the carbon monoxide detector was back in place and everything was fine. It's time to have a look at the condenser, I think. I've ordered a piece of copper tubing from Blackgates Engineering. This is a temporary piece of tubing I'm just using for ideas. I've ordered a piece of 16 gauge copper tubing, 2.5 inches in diameter and 9 and 3 quarters of an inch long. This piece of tubing is only about 2 inches diameter. The condenser I propose to make for this plant is going to be a horizontal one rather than vertical. I need to connect a pipe from the exhaust outlet to a manifold on the condenser and then also connect a pipe from the condenser to the chimney. And apart from some sort of a mounting, I need to fit a tap to the condenser to allow me to drain the condensate complete with the oil residue from time to time. A condenser on a miniature steam plant is more of an oil trap than anything else, because without it a lot of oil residue would enter the chimney, where it would make a horrible noise because it's very hot in there. By using a condenser, the only thing that goes to the chimney is water vapour. I'll start work on the proper condenser as soon as I get the copper tube from Blackgates Engineering. So until then, I'd like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.